All right, guys. So on this episode, if you get what you vote for, we have to go to Portland, Oregon, aka Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs World, aka Looney Tunes Land, uh, where progressivism <laughs> is the ruling ideology, right? Far left woke progressivism, which, like I try to tell you guys, and I have to make this very, very, very clear. In my opinion, is the biggest domestic terror threat to this country is far left extremist woke ideology okay for as much as they want to talk about the alleged white supremacists on the right i'm not seeing too much violence being done by white supremacists i'm not seeing too many economic consequences of white supremacy but i am seeing a whole lot of violence and economic consequences of woke supremacy okay which is rampant in the left coast okay uh so in this episode of you get what you vote for cracker Barrel, which is a nationwide famous restaurant chain is announcing that they're closing all of their stores slash restaurants in portland oregon take a look restaurant chain saying see ya to most of oregon thanks for joining us i'm david mulco today cracker barrel the roadside chain known as much for its country store as its chicken fried steak abruptly shut down three out of its four oregon locations two of those in the Portland metro area, Catherine Cook caught up with customers and now former workers, all who were caught off guard. Outside Cracker Barrel in Tualatin, the signs took customers by surprise Monday. They closed. There's a sign on the door. So that's sad. Peggy Irvine didn't know what to make of the sudden closure. Neither did Jordan Nursky, who worked here. We didn't really know anything was happening. And then just out of the blue this morning, just got a phone call. And I'm like, yeah, well, we got to team meeting at the Cracker Barrel in Beaverton. I'm really upset and I drove especially to have something to eat and they closed. Another surprise closure. When you're raised in the south and there's no good southern cooking around here, uh, you know, I didn't know if the Yankees could support good southern cooking and apparently not. Cracker Barrel shared a statement with us. It read in part, we are saddened that we have been unable to overcome the impact the pandemic had on our business and have made the difficult decision to close the Beaverton, Tualatin and Bend locations. The decision to close a store is never one we take lightly and our focus right now is in assisting our impacted employees during this transition. I thought that places here that made it through the pandemic would still make it through and Cracker Barrel's pretty popular, so that was surprising. Back in 2017, about 100 people lined up for the Cracker Barrel's grand opening in Tualatin, the chain's first on the West Coast. Irvine remembers it stayed busy for years. Tons of people. You couldn't get in for, yeah, like an hour and a half wait. But times have changed. Last August, Cracker Barrel closed its Jansen Beach location. At the time, employees told us it was due to security issues. There's a a lot of theft, people on drugs. And restaurants in general have struggled. It's a tough industry, big time. Rachel Martin works at a restaurant near Cracker Barrel. She's sad for those who've lost jobs and customers who've lost part of their normal. It was sad to see them pulling up, getting out of their walkers and walking up to the door. And then, you know, so I've just been watching that all day from over from next door. And I'm just like, oh, I'm sad. Now, there is still one Cracker Barrel left in Oregon. It's in Medford, and corporate tells us it's staying open. Now, besides the three closures in Oregon, Cracker Barrel also has, has closed a restaurant in St. Louis today, and the chain has more than 660 locations across 45 states. David. A lot of stories, a lot of memories in a lot of places. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah, so before I get into this Cracker Barrel closing, and their bullshit <laughs> reasoning for why they're closing. And excuse my language, that's the only thing I can call it, okay? It's bullshit, right? Citing the pandemic, right? It's the pandemic, okay? Uh, it's not just Cracker Barrel is, is the only restaurant that, that's closing down in, in Oregon post-pandemic. Uh, you have thousands of restaurants that have closed down across Portland, Oregon, uh, in response to what we, we all know the real issue is, <laughs> which is crime. Watching out for you. Now, more than three years after it began, the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic continue to hurt local restaurants. Cracker Barrel announcing closures in Beaverton and Tualatin. And now Portland's oldest Jewish deli closing at the end of this month. Thanks for joining us for Queen 6 News at 6. I'm Elizabeth Din. I'm Jeff Gianola. Jenny Young live now with what needs to happen for restaurants to turn things around, Jenny. 
Jeff, the president of the uh, Restaurant and Lodging Association, says that we will continue to see restaurant closures throughout 2023. But he is optimistic, he says, because people are still opening restaurants. He was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it was pretty, it, 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 was, it, sad. it sucked, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kobe Hansen and Anya Walker, among countless Portlanders, sad to say goodbye to Cornblatt's Deli. For them, it's not just the bagels and lox, Reuben sandwiches, and the New York-style deli charm that make this place special. It was actually one of the first places we went to when we started dating. Yeah. yeah. Cornblatt's opened on Northwest 23rd three decades ago. The current owner tells me business never fully recovered from the impacts of the pandemic and says the number of people shopping and dining in this neighborhood has decreased drastically due to homelessness and crime. We have to do so much more to create uh, the sense of safety and security and, and really keep this practice of uh, criminal acts where we're just breaking random windows in small business shops across the region. I mean, that just has to stop. Jason Brandt, president and CEO of the Oregon Restaurant and Lodging Association, says business owners, especially in the downtown core, are desperate for a visible police presence. He met with Governor Kotek today and tells me they discussed getting more officers on the streets. We have to increase capacity to make sure that people can get through the academy process so that the officers can get out on the streets and make the difference. Brandt says since the COVID-19 shutdowns out of the roughly 10,000 restaurants across the state, about 2,000 have closed. However, he says there's been more than 1,200 open, leaving him optimistic about the future. As long as we can continue to keep our eye on the prize and focus on these areas that could take us off track and result in more lost business, we're going to have more and more consumer demand over the next decade. All right, so Kornblatt's last day open March 30th, but the owner of Henry Higgins Bagels, a local favorite in Portland, opening up the location in that space, and it will open on May 1st. Reporting live, Jenny Young, Coin6 News. Oh, man, you got to love the local news trying to spin a positive light on a shithole situation, okay? <laughs> that is what Oregon is. Did you notice that Crockerboro also is closing a location in St. Louis, uh, Corey Bush's city, which is one of the most dangerous cities, not just in the country, but actually in the world, <laughs> right? I mean, uh, uh, St. Louis is, is more dangerous than some parts of South and Central America, like Ecuador or El Salvador. Yeah, it's, it's probably more dangerous to be in St. Louis than some of those places, okay? Uh, which, again, officially makes St. Louis <laughs> a liberal shithole as well, too. You notice how it's a trend here, okay? You got Starbucks, you got Walmart, you got all these stores, Cracker Barrel included, that are closing up in these inner liberal cities. And again, this is an example of you get what you vote for. Because while Cracker Barrel is given a BS reason <laughs> for why they're closing, okay? Uh, it's the pandemic. We all know exactly what's going on here. It's crime. And stores like Cracker Barrel get hit with a dummy whammy, with a double whammy, because not only do they sell food, so you got the people that do the, you know, they don and dash, right? They go in there, they get something to eat, and then they walk out the door, right? Stealing food, essentially. Uh, they also have a physical store, okay? They sell clothes and stuff like that. Uh, that's probably getting stolen as well, too, right? Along with all the other random acts of vandalism that piles up as business expenses, and Sometimes it gets to the point where stores just simply can't operate, okay? You can't make a profit when people are stealing all your food, they're stealing all your merchandise, and they're vandalizing your store, okay? Walmart real realized that, and they got the hell out of there, right? If Walmart can't survive in a place like Portland, what makes you think any other businesses can survive, right? God bless the soul of all the non-liberal, right, uh, business owners in Portland, Oregon, okay, who did not vote for this, who have their businesses broken into and vandalized and are losing money to feed them, their families, and their employees, uh, all because of liberal lunacy, all because they have a DA out there who refuses to prosecute crimes like theft, okay, he refuses to prosecute because apparently locking up criminals is racist, right, locking up criminals is racist, and this is what you get when you have this type of ideology. This is what you get when you have these lunatics running your city. See, for the life of me, I, I really don't understand it. 
it, are the Republicans that bad, <laughs> right? I got to start to question myself. I'm like, are Republicans that bad, okay, that none of these liberal cities will allow one to actually run the city, <laughs> okay? Uh, because when we had a, a Republican run in New York City, Rudy uh, Giuliani, um, crime almost disappeared, <laughs> right? He really cleaned that city up, okay? We have a prime example of what happens when a Republican runs a major liberal city he cleans it up, right? Probably one of the best New York City mayors ever. But for the life of me, these people can't vote Republican, right? They can't vote for something different. They can't vote for change. Again, it's almost like they like it. They like living in filth. They like living in shit, right? They like living next to homeless people, okay? They, they like chaos and destruction. That's what it seems like to me. So I only can really feel so bad because, again, this is what they voted for. And one of the reasons why I love doing these videos is because I, I just want to red pill one person, right? Every time I make a video, I'm like, I want to red pill one person. I want one person to see the light. I want one person to watch my video and say, you know what? <laughs> these people are out of control. I can't vote for this, especially at the local level, right? Local elections are so important. You're really only seeing these stories coming out of these major liberal cities where you have this mass exodus of businesses because crime is out of control. Again, this is what you vote for when you continuously vote Democrat, you continuously vote progressive. This is what you're headed towards. This is what you're going to get. Business is going to leave. Your city is going to be in a state of chaos 24-7. Domestic terrorists, Antifa, <laughs> BLM, they're going to take over, right? That's what happens. But, here, but apparently this is what they want because, you know, allegedly Republicans are racist. So, hey, you can't fix stupid, right? You can't fix stupid. It is what it is. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.